How's the Vancouver rain compared to the California sun? Well, I came straight from Hawaii, which is amazing, and uh, so I've mostly been in, in the room since I've been here, but I'll be right back out, yeah. Uh, what's the latest? I mean, you had a great comeback from retirement. Uh, I know there's you know, the whole Cerrito thing out there. Do you have any idea what your plans are from here? Have they contacted you about another fight, anything like that? Um, I've talked a little bit about another fight, but um, nothing in concrete. You know, some guys just got scheduled. Song Yudong just got scheduled against uh, Cody Stamen, who's a guy that I'm, you know, coaching and, and helping out. So I'm excited for that one. And uh, just kind of looking at options right now. I'm trying to have a discussion with, with, with the UFC and see kind of what the plan is. There's a lot of interesting things happening at the weight class, so um, I'm just kind of in a holding pattern, enjoying a, a break with the family. Was in Hawaii yesterday, flew in for this, flying back to Hawaii, and then I'll be back home. But you do want to fight again, right? The plan is to yeah. yeah. Most likely, but I mean, I don't don't have to, but I'd like to. I've, I've been itching to fight, to be honest. At this stage of your career, is it you'll fight as long as they give you names that interest you? You're not just going to fight anyone, right? Yeah, it's. I mean, it's either or. It's either, you know, pay me to fight whoever you want, or I'll just fight people that sound interesting to me. And so, I don't know. I'm, I, I want to talk to Dane about it, to be honest. Sit down with him and say, look, there's a couple ways this could go. I could not fight again. I could fight big fights. Or you can pay me a bunch to fight the, the new up-and-comers that you want to, you know, have me fight. That, that's the way I look at it. And, and for me, I don't have to fight. I love fighting. I've been, you know, staying hungry. Uh, I'm going to continue to compete regardless. I'm going to do more grappling matches and stay in the gym. Um, absolutely. So I'll be ready for anything, but no guarantees, really. It's one of the unique take, though. You're admitting, like, hey, they want to build up these young stars. I'll be around to do Yeah, this. that's happened a lot, by the way. Michael McDonald, uh, I mean... Uh, Ricky Simone, uh, there's a long list of guys that they've, they've tried to do that with me because at 40 years old, I've been an older guy for a decade now, so um, in their minds. But for me, I'm, you know, look good, feel good, live a healthy lifestyle. Looks like Cejudo's going to fight Joseph Benavidez next, that flyweight. Uh, do you think they should do an interim title at Bantamweight just because it looks like Cejudo's going to be out for a while? I don't care about the titles and stuff and interim titles. I don't know. I'm so confused about everything right now. Right. Like, I'm like, who's the champion? Is it Colby? Is it Usman? Is it, you know, like, I'm just like, what's going on? Uh, I don't really care about that per se. Right. Um, it's about interim. But, um, and, and I don't know. You, you never know what's going to happen. They say that, I mean, Henry's still out. It's a long time till that fight happens. I mean, I love Joe Benavidez, so I'd love to see him get his opportunities. And he's had opportunities just like me, and and I think you know he's he's on the same path of like, you know, at it till the till the end. He'll be a top dog, so that'd be great. But who knows? It was mentioned at the Q and A. You know, if someone asked you about the desire, the reason to come back, and you mentioned getting the itch. But how much is the situation at Bantam Bantamweight the reason? Because it feels wide open. It feels like anyone's game. Well, I decided to come back before TJ got popped, and I and before other people were injured. Um, it was a personal thing for me. The, the biggest thing is the landscape. In, in my opinion, the most exciting part about the sport right now is ESPN, about the global expansion, about the, the other organizations out there. I mean, I don't know. I'm under contract with the UFC, but I've you know, heard what organizations are paying across the globe, and the sport is just rising and rising. And I'm a UFC guy. I want to fight in the UFC, but uh, my contract is four years old. You know, I, I, I like to rehash things and say, look, dude, I'll like to be a warrior for you, but let's let's uh, have it make sense. How many, how many more fights or years are on your contract? I have three fights left. But you think, you know, you've been away, but you think you'd be able to renegotiate that now instead of waiting for that? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Would that be a big factor in you fighting again is if you're allowed to renegotiate that? Yeah, probably. You're you mentioned really... grappling. Uh, I know you did Kinetic recently. What was that experience like? That was awesome. So I actually was one of the founders of Kinetic, and, and, and I was there as a, a host and, and, and somebody that helped run the show, but uh, I didn't get to compete this time. I had done Polaris, I did uh, the Quintet, um, and then I had done the Submission Underground with Chael when I was retired, I competed against all world-class guys, world champions, Hall of Famers, um, and I loved it, man. I mean, that's that's what I do for fun and for to stay in shape. I'm not like, you know, I, I like to do stuff that interests me, so staying in shape for me is Rolling jujitsu hard, hitting mitts, uh, hold mitts, drilling with the guys. Like that's that's how I stay in shape. 
the promotional side with that show? Is that something you want to do more of? I've got a lot of stuff that I'm doing from a production standpoint. Um, definitely in the the mixed martial arts space for sure, but other things as well. We had our first movie that we produced called Green Fever, and I've got a lot of stuff that we're working on. A TV show called Insight. I was just going to say, Cody Garbrandt, uh, you're very close with him and a teammate. Uh, any idea when he'll look to return? Because I know we've heard he's had some injuries, and I, obviously the, the next fight back is very important. Cody's, Cody's at a forced break right now because he did this long rehab, healing himself up, which was really proactive. He was getting in amazing shape and, and still improving, um, making money, you know, hustling. You see him, you know, doing doing everywhere. things everywhere. Um, and then his first day back, he, he had done an appearance in, in Washington and got in with uh, Mike Chiesa and Sam Cecilia and, and those guys. We have a great relationship with them. He went his first day over there and went and sparred and, and – had a serious injury in his wrist, which is kind of the same as the old injury. So it was really disheartening. He texted me that day and, and uh, you know, but he's staying positive And, you know, when Cody's firing on, us, on, on, on all cylinders, there's no one in the world that can hold a, hold a match to him. How about Sage Northcutt? How's he recovering from that, that last fight? He's doing good. It was, it's been a strange kind of recovery because it's such a unique injury. Um, he's telling me that he's weighing 165 and he wants to fight 55s again, like I always told him to. Um, and he's, that's his exact word. Just like you always said, Mr. Faber, <laughs> I should be fighting 155s. He's, he's staying lean and, uh, you know, staying really positive. But it's going to be a long journey for him back, too. And he's in no rush. Do you feel like he was kind of done dirty with that opponent selection? Because a lot of people were saying, you know, this guy's too experienced in kickboxing. Um, I don't want to say done dirty. I think just, you know, that that's a new organization, in my opinion, compared to what's, what's going on here. And... Sage is a man of faith. He believes in in higher power, but he also believes what people are telling him. He takes things at face value. And he was under the impression that nobody's cutting weight, which was really hard for me to believe. I'm saying I don't think that's the case. He's also, uh, you know, excited about the matchup and this and that. He should not be fighting 185 pounds. He's trying to gain weight as much as he can to get to 183, 184 pounds when in reality he should be fighting competitively at 155, maybe 170 pounds. So um, that was, you know, you support your guys, but you don't necessarily get to dictate their whole career, unfortunately, in all cases. Last question, guys. Is that, is that a learning experience for him in more ways than one, right? So. Yeah, absolutely. It's a hard lesson, and, and, uh, and it's an exciting time for him also. He's got some time off. He's in a good place in his life where he's uh, enjoying other things, and, and uh, he's such a sweet kid, man. Um, I want to get your reaction on this. You mentioned Peter Yan, not interested in fighting him in the cage, but you grappled him in Connecticut. He responded to you. He said, we can grapple after I put a boxing clinic on your eye favor. Just want to yeah. get your reaction on that. Is that, oh, we're doing a boxing match? That's what Peter wants. Yeah. Oh, we're gonna, oh, let's do a boxing match, then we'll do a jiu-jitsu match. We'll see how it goes. I box with some tough guys. I mean, I know he's, uh, he's got some boxing pedigree. Uh, I've been boxing since I started fighting professionally. That was uh, 2003. So that's 13 years. I can box too. I'm not scared, homie. But let's get your let's get your your rating up first, and then we'll go from there. I'll do both those though, and he can come train at my gym too. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you.